go. And okay. I just see the show how many people are watching. Okay. And then any comments just pop in automatically. So gotcha. feel free to let people know what's going on and you can start, yeah. Oh, you think people are watching? Yeah, we got uh, one we got one okay. right now. Hey, we got one viewer. So I uh I'm heading into the city to do a uh a uh interview with Chris Van Vliet. I have about a 50 minute drive. So I thought I would jump on live to answer some of the questions that I'm unable to get to. I get great questions in the, in the comments. Hey, hello. I now bear with me. I've never done this ever. So please, please, please bear with me. Um, I'm going to try to get to many questions. Hello. Hello, Kenneth. Hello, average Joe, <laughs> average Joe. I love it. <laughs> What's going on? Ah, thank you. Uh, I, listen, the channel shocks me more than anybody. I can promise you that. Uh, well, the success of it. Like, I thought when I did it, 20 people would be tuning in each week. So I'm happy that uh, you guys are enjoying the content. I'm happy that you guys are are um, are joining us, you know, week after week. Thank you. Thank you. Who was my favorite opponent? opponent? Randy Orton, by far. Randy. Um, I actually, you know, was texting with Randy yesterday. And he was just, between him and Hunter, they, they, those were the two easiest guys ever to work. I far, great question. Um, I got my, uh, my partner sitting right over here too. Give him a thumbs up. Hey. <laughs> now, he's the magic behind this channel. I can guarantee you that. If it was up to me, nothing, and I mean nothing, would, uh, would look near as good as it does. He, You're too he, kind, Maven. <laughs> ah, look, look, right there. There's the... There's the, uh, that's the, that's the duo. I am technologically as unadvanced as any human being ever. So he's the man that gets it done. So I'm going to have him actually, oh, hold up. What was that? What was that? Somebody just tipped us. So let's answer that question. Absolutely. Thank you so much, guys. And again, bear with me. I've never went live. I'm an idiot. Ah. <laughs> He's gonna pull up the questions. I've never been live. I'm a I'm a moron when it comes to to technological stuff. So please, please, please bear with me. Let me see what this question is. Hey brother, here's a question. If Triple H called you for a half of game induction for a Hall of Fame induction, I evidently can't read either. Uh, would you take it? And what would be your speech? Okay. <laughs> Honestly, I don't think I did enough in the business to um, to warrant a Hall of Fame induction. I just don't like. I think the Hall of Fame is is there in order to you know to pay homage, to pay tribute to all those who actually changed the business. That said, if they wanted to do a tough enough. Hall of Fame induction, then yes, then I would be a part of it. In ring, I don't think I did enough. I just don't. Um, but I would take part. Now, as far as a speech, my speech would just be thanking the WWE because I am like I'm the fan that lived his dream. Um, if you guys watched a, a few videos back where you saw my old classroom, you know, that was me. Like I like that I was I had a big rock bulletin board. I had wrestling posters all throughout the class. I mean, I was the biggest fan ever. And I know you, you know, everyone on there says that, yeah, you think you're a rock wannabe. I promise you, I do not. I just admire the guy. I admire the entertainer that he is. I can't help, I, you know, I can't help we look similar. I mean, trust me, I, uh, that is not, not what I think. Um, and I just, I, I, I love what he's done. You know, so my speech would just be thanking the, uh, the WWE for having the foresight to, to actually, put together a show like Tough Enough. And then you know, the one thing that I think I accomplished was uh, getting Tough Enough to a season two. And that's what I actually am most most proud of with my time in that. I was nowhere near the most popular uh, Tough Enough guy ever or the most, uh, or the most um, um, successful. I mean, shoot, John Morrison, who is my favorite Tough Enough, <laughs> personal Tough Enough ever, I love love his wrestling more than anything and then obviously look what the Miz is doing that said um I don't think you know I don't think there's a tough enough to if you know myself Josh Chris Nydia if we weren't as as uh, didn't do as good and represent 
you know, that brand as we did. So that's what I'm most proud of. Got Great it. question. Another question for you. Okay, let me see. Hi, what are your thoughts on WWE Endeavor merger? Shocking. Like, literally, literally shocking. I uh, I was more con convinced, you know, the, the sun wouldn't come up tomorrow than, than Vince would ever let anyone have his baby. So it's... It's stunning, and it's stunning, you know, for, for you know, two parts. And the first part is I, I'm, I'm shocked Vince would ever give up control, and I'm shocked that he would ever, um, you know, not pass on the company to, you know, to, to Steph or to to Shane. Um, I, I, that just blows my mind. Yeah, that said, business is business, and I understand that. I understand, you know, that you have to do what's best at the moment. I apologize, guys. My, my I know my camera sucks. It uh, I have one of those those films that that keeps the screen from cracking when I drop it 17 times a day, and it just it's uh it's inching across the camera. So I apologize. I'm not as yeah, crystal the, clear. Yeah, I give this fella a shout, a shout out. Look at the super chat they sent. Oh my gosh, what is it? Uh, no, you just answered is, it, but give this. Uh, what is it? Ah, uh, yeah. Go back. Go back. Go back. It just disappeared. Oh my goodness. I'll try to see if I get it pulled yeah, up. Yeah, see if we can pull it back up. Here's another one. Shout. Video on that, on that exact topic. So I can't give too much away. Here's what I will tell you. That match changed on the fly. Um, I was getting so much heat, like more heat than they, uh, I'm sorry, the glare is coming. I was getting more heat than they even thought I was. So, uh, Kyoto, the ref got, you know, through the IFB that Vince wanted me to change up, cut a fly on the, you know, cut a promo on the fly. Yeah, it was great. And, uh, I mean, that's the Puerto Rico crowd just hated my guts, which meant I was doing my job. So it was so much fun. I loved it. I that was the match that I literally left. And whenever anybody asked me, you know, was I shocked when I was released when I was, I was because of that. Like I, I left that, that match that night and I, I left, <laughs> you know, that night and they literally told me, the security literally told me, they were like, yo, go back to your room and stay there because these people take this stuff serious and there might be people that are really mad at you. So I, I abided, I listened. Um, but after that, I thought I was going to get a, you know, start of getting a little bit more of a push. So obviously, you know, like I said, business being business, they didn't see it that way. What am I going to do? But I am proud of, of what I did that night. And then Shelton, I mean, my God, Shelton's the best athlete I've ever, ever seen, ever been in the ring with that man. Like when you watch him run up ladders, human beings shouldn't be able to do that. Like they just shouldn't. I would say try it, but don't, please don't, because you're going to hurt yourself. Shelton's just, he's, he's the best athlete I've ever been around. And wrestlers are good athletes. Shelton, great athlete. Mark Jindrak was a phenomenal athlete. And Shelton's are, are better athletes. I mean, uh, wrestlers are better athletes than you think. Great question. What else do we got? Yeah, one from Justin. Hey, Justin. Uh, thank you so much. Was there ever talks or plans of an IC title run with you during the 0405? You were on Raw every week, just the heel turn, something seemed right. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, you know what? That's, that's shit. I thought, I thought they were going to put the IC title on me eventually. Maybe not. Um, maybe not against Shelton at that pay per view. Maybe down the road. Um, if you know wrestling, though, you know they book. Uh, I see title holders as someone that eventually they see as a world champion. So the fact that I never got it just shows me that they probably didn't never see me as a world champion. Um, would I like to have think that eventually, you know, I could have been maybe in 08, 09, you know, with maybe one or two I see title runs of, you know, varying success and failures yeah of course and i would have loved that that's what i was hoping for and then when i went with shell uh with uh, simon dean who i had a blast with i love nova love love mike bucci and if you're out there bucci keep doing good stuff in louisville you are truly making a difference but you know we, we had fun and i thought my heel character was was getting better week after week
you know, which I thought hopefully would lead to maybe tag team titles and then eventually an IC title uh, run. I wasn't impatient. I, I was along. They just didn't see it that way. Great question. Thanks, Tyson. Yeah, hey, Tyson. Uh, why did you mention Benoit in your ratings video? Um, I, all right, I'll mention him here. And it's not because of why people think, and it's not because of Benoit being, um, you know, yeah, just ostracized from all memory in the WWE. I have the ability to to speak about Benoit. I have on Cafe De, Cafe De, um, De Rene on Rene Dupree's podcast. I've explained it. I'll explain it real quick. Benoit, I lead everything off with. I can't justify his actions and what he did to Nancy and Daniel by any stretch of the imagination. It's abhorrent. It's unforgivable. It's just the most ungodly thing act I can I can imagine. But Benoit was a great wrestler. He was, and he was one of those figures that you know when I got into the business I mean there was a few guys that when you saw them saw them backstage they were on another level of just of respect and he was definitely on that uh, eventually one day we do plan on doing a full video on um, my interactions with with Chris what I think about what he did and but understand that has to be done tactfully and because first and foremost I just always always want to pay respects to uh to to the memory of daniel and uh nancy uh, above everything else shugu has a question for hi you. shu hi shugu <laughs> great great name hey maven if if you could create a stable in the wwe who would it be with and why oh okay all right so you're giving me anybody so here's my answer to that my stable would be uh, myself randy orton Mark Jindrak. Um, from today's class, I would I class I would take uh, Seth Rollins. I love Seth's work, and um, I would uh, probably you got. I mean, you can't have a have a stable without throwing a, a, a Samoan in there. So I would uh, I would take Umaga Eki, and here's why. Um, I I would love to see what what Eki could have done against Rome, and I think that would be just a million billion dollar idea and uh those i think i i think i listed five good five names if i was if it was more or less i apologize i uh, uh along with not being able to read i also evidently can't count so that would be my perfect stable um you know randy was my guy i rode with you know the most uh Jindrak was is a guy i still talk to to this day um almost daily and um you know, Eki was one of my best friends on the road, and I miss him, miss him each and every day. And I mean, Seth is just—I just—I love everything about Seth. For everything from his entrance to his in-ring work, and his—I mean, his character to me is just upper echelon. So that would be my stable. Good, uh, good question, Shugu. <laughs> I would have you on there too, Shugu, just so I could say that every night. William's got a question for you. All right. Hey, William Schaefer, what do you think of CM Punk? Hey, Punk can thank me. It was actually in a tag match against myself and um, I think Simon, I believe Simon Dean. Um, Stevie Richards, another great guy. And if you're not, if you're not watching Stevie Richards' uh, YouTube channel, correct that mistake today. He does some of the best work. He... He actually, that my favorite YouTube channel is Stevie's channel. But Stevie came up to me earlier in the uh, in that day when they asked me. He was like, hey, uh, a good friend of mine, CM Punk, is going to be wrestling tonight. Can you do six minutes with him? And I was like, yeah. I mean, if you're asking me to do something, of course I'll do it. So, you know, we went out, and you immediately could see that he could work. And, yeah, you could see. It's, it's weird. You know when someone has that something different that it factor it was written all over cm punk um yeah punk like rvd like other guys i've mentioned in videos punk's an individual and you have to celebrate individuality um and i you know 
who am I to tell somebody what they should do or how they should be acting? I'll never do that. I don't want someone to do it to me. I don't want someone to judge me on my worst day. I'll never do it to someone else. So I have to trust the fact that Punk knows what's best for him, what's best for his family, and what's best for his future and longevity. That being said, whatever his decisions are, whether it be to stay, to go, go to AEW, go to New Japan, go back to WWE, go to Impact, whatever. It's going to be what's best for him, or to stay at home. You know, he might want to. He, his body's probably beat all to hell at this point. He probably just needs some time off. Remember this: everybody in wrestling, and I mean everybody backstage, every guy back there is kissed on the lips by ambition. And what I mean by that is something drives every superstar, man, woman, even the ring announcer. There's something something that drives them. I just don't know what it is. It might be, you know, what might be driving him is just needing time off for the time being. Do I think we'll see more from Punk in the wrestling world? Absolutely. Um, and well, yeah, whatever he decides, I'll support 150%. Remember that. Kissed on the lips by ambition. I heard it. I heard that, con that phrase on uh, in, in the heat of the night when I was probably 10 years old and I've literally remembered it ever since. Joel's got a question for you. Hey, Joel Morris. Can you do a video on your time in TNA, please? Well, I, uh, yeah, but my, my time in TNA, it wasn't really necessarily TNA. We were just doing TNA house shows. Um, when I left the WWE, TNA was just starting up, and I joined up with this guy named Hermie Sadler who was running house shows using the six-sided ring, using the TNA banner. And I worked guys like um, Billy Gunn, Rhino. Um, but that's where I learned to wrestle. Like, literally, I, I've, I've said it in interviews before, uh, Cafe de Rene. Um, you know, my time in WWE, I was a time wrestler. I would wrestle to a specific minute, you know, six minutes, you know, eight minutes, four minutes, 12 minutes. And it wasn't until I was able to do those TNA house shows with Billy Gunn, with Rhino, you know, with, um, oh gosh, who else, uh, D'Lo Brown that we were able to go out, you know, they would say, hey, you got 12 to 15, maybe cut a 10 minute promo. And you know, that's where I really truly learned to work. I loved it. I had a blast. Um, you know, unfortunately I didn't, didn't go to TNA after that just because other, uh, other opportunities came called. Um, yeah, I'll admit it. I'm not monogamous in the world of entertainment, <laughs> strictly to professional wrestling. I like hosting. I uh, worked with BET, I worked with HSN, and I enjoyed those endeavors. I enjoyed my time on uh, on both of those networks. Um, and hey, no one ever hit me in, a, in the head with a chair on a HSN when I was selling Confederated products, so. Carlos got a question for you. Hey, Carlos, hey. Um, hold up, I can't read it. At, oh, damn it. Carlos, I'm sorry. I apologize, brother. Again, guys, I was a school teacher, but Maven, Mr. Huffman is a questionable reader. That's what I used to tell my kids. <laughs> oh my whenever I was a whenever I'd misspell a word, I would always say, Yeah, Mr. Huffman's a questionable speller. <laughs> Here, let's go to this one. All right, I'm sorry, Carlos. What do you where do you wrestle now? Good question. Um I my body's beat all to hell, so I don't I limit my wrestling highly. Um, I mean, I'm still, I'm sitting right now in this car with three herniated bulging discs and I could probably use a neck surgery. Um, so I wrestle very limited. I did agree to wrestle a couple years ago, Matt Cardona, just because Matt's my favorite wrestler. Now, there's two guys that I will watch anything they do. Matt and there's a guy called VSK. And if you haven't heard of VSK, look his stuff up. I love this kid. But Cardona asked me to do a, uh, a match with him on FWF Live 4. And, I mean, it was, you know, we got to shoot some, you know, some promos and everything. And we got to build it up. And I just had a blast. And, you know, I took, for me, for my money, you know, Cardona's up there with some of the best in the world. How he is not on WWE programming weekly blows my, literally blows my mind. Um, but... Also, I, I do some work with ISPW, um, International Superstars of Professional Wrestling. Um, it's a local brand here in New Jersey. And I, in that organization, I do some managing work with, uh, with Bull James. Now, if I got back into wrestling 
on a full-time basis, that's more along the lines of where I could uh, I could see myself managing, maybe being a uh, a mouthpiece, or you know, being able to go out, cut heel promos, get get someone over, maybe get a younger talent, someone who's not um, not comfortable on the mic, uh, get heat for them, and you know, occasionally take 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 the take the occasional bump. Will it happen? God, who knows? I don't. I can't. I can't predict the future any 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 better than Miss Cleo could. So um, we'll see. We will see what happens. I would bump sparingly, but my athleticism has left me to to. I would be doing a disservice to myself and to wrestling at, altogether to go back and try to wrestle a full schedule. And plus, man, I don't know if I have what it takes to get back into sh- the shape you have to get into to do that full time. It was easier in my twenties. It's not uh, not as easy now that I'm knocking the door knocking on the door of of being fifty. So um, yeah, but that's a great question. Okay. Coins TV. Hey, Coins TV. Would you ever be a be a shopping network? What does that say? Host? Wow! Would I ever be a shopping network host again? Absolutely. Contrary to popular belief, best job I ever had. Best. And if you're a wrestling fan and that offends you, I am sorry. Best. Here's why. I worked about two days a week. Um, I was the uh, host on Home Shopping Network, selling um, all sports-related I- items. Heck, I got to work with Deion Sanders when uh, when he went to the Hall of Fame. I got to do several shows with with Primetime. Um, but it was just it was the best gig. It was a you know I got a salary, a pretty pretty good salary. And I mean I think my long day was working an hour. You know, so uh, yeah, but I definitely do it. I I rarely rarely. Uh, shut the door on on all opportunities. Um, yeah, if you if if you shut the door on opportunities, then then what you're saying to yourself is that you're you're pigeonholing yourself. And I'm not going to do that. Um, like I said, I can't predict the future. I don't know what's coming my way, but I'm always willing to listen to whatever. If anybody thinks that I could bring something to their product, to their brand, um, to where I could be an asset, yeah, I'm heck, I'm willing to listen. And if that's going back on HSN and selling, you know, selling merchandise, then why not? Yeah, we almost, almost got hit. That have been, that have been pretty, pretty crappy. All right, um, the bat, the Batman. What is that? Hey, Maven, if you could change one thing from what you did in WWE, what would it be and why? Also, love your videos. Keep them coming. Thank you for the uh, for the kind words and the compliment. Uh, great, 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 great question. If I could change one thing, actually, I'm gonna hold off on that. I have a, uh, and I'm gonna do a little quick, little quick plug. Um, we have a regrets video, don't we, Zach? Yes, we do. All right, see, <laughs> there's your proof. Do we have a regrets video coming up? Yes, we do. All right. <laughs> In this regrets video, I talk about ten things that I would uh, I would change you know, during my time in the WWE, and actually, um, one and two. Are, uh, are are actually pretty close to my heart. Actually, one of them is just like I said in the in the one video. My time spent at or lack thereof spent at the ring, getting better when Johnny told me to. You know, you know, teaser, spoiler. That's going to be on there. Um, just I viewed wrestling. You know, I guess the best way to put it is, although I was a professional wrestler, I was a kid and I wasn't professional. The best way to put it is, if I could go back in my time, I would make sure I was I was a professional. And by that, I mean doing everything through a 24-hour period in the day to make myself better, make myself a better employee, make myself a better worker. Um, that probably would have meant going to far less strip clubs and bars at night, and that probably would have meant um, trying to become a better wrestler. Guys, I'm getting ready to go through a tunnel. I, uh, I can't promise that I'm going to be able to, to uh, stay on. If it goes out, we'll come back on as soon as, as soon as we're out of the, uh, the tunnel. Um, give me the next one. Hmm. Would you, would John or Vince McMahon biopic be? What does that mean? Would, would biopic. Uh, what, what genre would a Vince McMahon biopic be? Like, a biography movie or action yeah probably <laughs> probably drama action a little bit of suspense in there um yeah good good that's actually that's the first time i've ever been asked that that's a great question um yeah vince is again he's a businessman and you know i know he gets heat for being a businessman 
Um, and I know in the in the video we did with um, I wonder if there's a light back here. In the video, in the video we did with um, you know with where, where we talked about the John Oliver stuff. You know, you know, I, I should have said it, Vince. You know, Vince can't. He there's no way he could have admitted to um, to any responsibility for what happens to wrestlers because then he'd be sued he'd be and somebody put that in the comments i was like you know what he's right you know vince would be sued through the roof you know so probably everything action adventure drama comedy everything vince's you know vince is one of the uh, america's greatest businessmen men love him or hate him you know he has turned a a former carnival attraction into a a worldwide billion dollar uh entity Lord. The landlord harassment channel. I heard you get annoyed when someone recognizes you in WWE. Is that true? Also, would you ever accept a job? Nah, I, let, answer me this. Have you ever had a bad day? I mean, I'm sure you have. I know I've, because I've read on there. Yeah, I met Maven one time, you know, and he, he was, you know, he, he didn't want to talk about the WWE. It was probably just a day I was having a bad day. Um, no, whenever somebody meets me, they make my day. I don't make theirs. I can promise you that. I get recognized so in in often that you know when they do, I'm I'm the one asking them. You want to take a picture? Do you want to do this? Because I want them to leave with a a good, um, you know, just a, a good experience of meeting me. And you know, if that's if there's been one or two times. That that did that wasn't the case. I deeply apologize. That's not what I go go after. I think if I I, I would like to think that ninety nine percent of the time people meet me and want to talk about my time in the WWE, I'm more than obliging. And if I'm not, then I'm I'm very sorry. It was probably just a bad day. Hey Maven, this is Chris. I drove from Baltimore. Ah, what's up, Chris? Yeah. So I did an ISPW show um, a few weeks back in Wildwood, and Chris drove all the way up from uh, from Baltimore, and literally he drove up just to see me. So I was like, "You drive up here to see me. I'm going to give you free pictures." I yeah, I, I couldn't bestow enough uh, Maven merch on this guy, and Chris, I thank you for that. And I don't know if you stay paid for the show. If you did, I, I, I hope you enjoyed it. And I thoroughly appreciated meeting you at Wildwood. Anybody that's, that'll drive that far to meet me, A, you probably need to have your head examined. And B, I appreciate it. Gosh, man. Chris or myself could have won. Josh has made his time enough into a very very successful career in the wrestling business. No one's happier than I am. Josh is a great, great human being, and um, he is was a true fan. We used to spend hours just uh, talking over wrestling uh, back in the house and tough enough. And you know, Josh was was my 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 number one friend friend in the house. So I'm happy for him. If he would have won tough enough, I would have been there to, to cheer him on and say, "You earned it, buddy." Have you checked out Young Boy the uh, Maven Royal Rumble? Thirty Maven Royal Rumble video SmackDown. Shut your mouth. I have not checked that out. I will though. I definitely will. Your thoughts on Roman? Ah, uh, legend. I mean, Roman's going to go down in this business as one of the one of the greatest to, greatest to ever um, lace him up. Um, Rob, uh, hold up, I want to answer that one too. Who's a better heel, Orton or Edge? I'll get to that. Uh, Roman is just, I mean, he has everything. I mean, the look, he can work. He, um, I mean, he's got this, just the, uh, the, the, the overall just appearance. He looks like a champion. I mean, think about champions, and they look like champions. I mean, everybody going back from Austin to Rock to Hunter to, uh, you know, Batista. Roman fits that fits that mold he will go down as a legend he will go down as one of the best to ever uh you know ever ever do this business and um i mean there's a spot in the hall of fame just just waiting for him to join now what previous question who was the better heel orton or edge um it's funny i think orton was the better heel and i think edge was the better baby face i think edge could uh, uh had a way of manipulating the crowd to 
you know, get, you know, true heat. And anybody that knows uh, remembers the old, uh, the old sign in during the territory days, you know, personal issues, draw money. Well, Edge was great at that. But I mean, you know, Orton, just the way he, you know, would, you know, set up and, you know, hit the RKO or just the way he would glare at people. And Orton's, and for my money, Orton's the best to ever, ever do it. I'm biased, admittedly, but yeah. Great, both great, great guys. And Adam and Randy are legends as well. Hey, Maven, what was the be what's the best way to reach you? <laughs> best way to reach me? Um, I don't even know how to answer that. I don't know if I really am that reachable. I Remember, guys, I have a full-time job. And it's, uh, yeah, my, uh, my time is, is, is limited. We, uh, we get together and we film these videos usually, you know, five to seven at a time. And then the ed editing process starts. Um, I went to Fishburn in Waynesburg. Get out of here. Saw you on the original Fishburn marked out. Heck yeah, Fishburn. I, mean, I grew up in Waynesboro. Went to Wilson Memorial High School, uh, Fishburn Military Academy. Actually, Vince McMahon is, uh, is affiliated with Fishburn as well. Mm, Waynesburg, nice. Acknowledge me. <laughs> Just kidding, but I'm curious. If Vince called you right now and said to come back to work, you're going to be champion, would you? Wow. If Vince called me and said, come back, you're going to be champion. If if they said that and they gave me six months to focus on just getting back into shape and by that I mean getting my body back into shape to where I wouldn't mind taking my shirt off in public I'm not there now um, and then obviously getting into the ring and you know starting to bump just getting my body back to, to calloused to uh, to know you know just taking bumps over and over and then I, I, I want to say yes but I, I would have to see how my athleticism comes back I'm not the I'm not the athlete I I'm not the athlete I once was and you know, I don't. I don't want to go out and make a mockery of myself, or make the guys I'm working with look bad. Those guys that are are working these days, they're just too good. Like they're too good to to you know make them look stupid. That's not what I would want to do. Um, if I had six months to get back in shape and then see if my ring work came back to me, and if I could, you know, you know, put put a match out there that's not embarrassment not an embarrassment, then yeah, absolutely I would. Like I said, never pigeonhole yourself by saying what you won't do. Always keep your, your options open because you don't know what's going to come and you don't know. When he contacted me to do this channel, he said that he thought this could be successful. I said, I don't think I'm a big enough name by far. He disagreed and proved me wrong. If you would have asked me six months ago, would I have a YouTube channel? I'd have laughed in your face. So don't pigeonhole yourself. Never you know, never say what you can't do. Always be open to new opportunities, new insights. Um, you know, Try to learn something new and try to master something new. Again, this channel shocks no one more than me. Um, but now I'm all in. I'm having a blast. And I'm, I'm enjoying being able to reconnect with the fans. Hey, Maven, uh, what do you think the fans bring WWE replica belts to the uh, fans that bring replica belts to shows. Listen, anybody that's 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 that in on the business, God, God bless you. You're the ones that that gave me a career, and and I I love you. Um, whenever someone wants wants me to sign one, because I know how much money they they're not cheap. There we go. Now we're back. Oh, we're back. Uh. Like I, I, gosh, I appreciate the fans so much. The fans are why the, the fans are a how I started, and b how I made a living, and c how I still am able to be associated with the professional wrestling business. Um, and so anybody that's that dedicated to anything in life has my respect, has my love, has my admiration. So great question. Who was the toughest guy you worked with in the WWE in a, in a shoot. shoot? In a shoot. Okay. Ah, good question. It's a tie. Bob Holly, Kurt Angle. Both of those guys, I listen, if they if if they wanted to do a, to attack my mom, I would ask her what she did to, to piss them off. They're that they were those guys were both legit. Um both guys were just the toughest human beings that around um, by far. Oh, my goodness gracious. 
Batman's got another one. Hey, what's up, Batman? I know you don't really watch WWE anymore. I do not. Are you frustrated with uh, WWE stifles the young guys, i.e. Bray Wyatt? Um, two parts. Two that. Two parts. No, I'm not. Again, it's a business. I can't tell somebody how to. When you own something, you get to you get the luxury of doing what you want with it, whether I agree or disagree with it. And you know, I might wish they went in different directions. Hell, I wish they went in different directions when I was there, but it's not mine. I can't tell them what to do. So, you know, now I don't watch the product just because like I said in the last video, it just hurts too much. I watch it and it just makes me miss it. And like I correlated it with, you know, an ex, you know, the love of your life breaking up with you. I mean, do you want to see her every week walking by smiling? Hi, Maven. This is Rick. He's better than you. No, I don't. Yeah. Enjoy. Nice to meet you, Rick. F off. No, that's not, not what I want. Uh, want to see that said I support all those guys a hundred percent I support everyone on WWE programming AEW and impact because I know what it takes to uh, you know, to, to do that job they have my respect my admiration and I wish them all success lastly um, you know the loss of the loss of Bray was uh, it's one of those one of those passings that was truly felt um, and I think it was felt even beyond the, the wrestling world. And I, I, oh my God, I hate it that he, he left a, enough. <laughs> I hate it that he left a, uh, a gorgeous family behind. And, um, I thought the WWE did a good job with honoring him. And I know there's been other, other people honoring him and he will be, he's one of those guys that will be missed, but never forgotten. Um, RIP, RIP, big fella. Jordan's got a question for you. Hey, Jordan. Hey, Maven, if you could wrestle any legend in their prime, who would you pick? Oh, in their prime? Ah, Magnum TA. Uh, if you don't know who Magnum TA is, hey, you're not a wrestling fan. If you do, go Google him. Man, I grew up down in Virginia watching uh, uh, Crockett promotions. And back in the, in the mid-'80s, Magnum TA was on a tra an upward trajectory. He was going to, you know, to, to just change the business and um, was involved in a car accident and, um, you know, just, just tragic accident. I actually saw Magnum a few weeks back and, you know, was able to, you know, to, to thank him for what he meant to not only the wrestling business, but to my, my love and passion for, for this business and, you know, my evolution as a wrestler. Magnum was, God, he was good. He was amazing. He did a power slam that was just so crisp and everything he did was crisp. Great question. I know it's probably not who you think, but Magnum TA. Zach's got a question. Zach! <laughs> How hard would it be to build and maintain a WWE? Ah, oh, please continue doing. Yeah, listen, it's tough. I mean, shoot, like, I'm, Zach, I'm 46 and I, uh, I mean, you got to watch everything you eat and, and I'm on a, uh, I'm on a on a love affair with Ben and Jerry from time to time, but it's it's just that wrestling's a young man's business. It's a young man's game. Um, that said, I would try. You know, I would try to just watch everything that you know, every aspect of my diet. It's tough though. You literally. I mean, I remember Randy and I used to be on the road, and we we would go into restaurants, and I was timid on doing this because we would tell them to you know not cook our stuff in oil or do it with this or do it like that and you know, egg whites, no yo. And I'm like, I tell Randy, I'm like, man, they're they're a hundred percent back there spitting and everything that we ordered, you know. But and let's enjoy our spit. So, but I think today, I think today it's it's enough. It's easier to, um, I think it's easier to try to prepare your own meals before you go out. Wow. Hey, New York City, guys. I'm sorry. You got to love, you got to love this city. It's just 8 million maniacs converging all at once. Yeah. What's the next one? It's right here. Do you ever witness any steroid use? Oh, steroids. That video is coming out in one or two weeks. Wait for it. It's a good one. Maven, 
I haven't talked to you in a long time. What's your best way to send you some pictures I think you'd love to see? Um, the best way is uh, I'm going to try to start making sure I put uh, on this uh, this site whenever I'm doing more, um, more autograph signings. Like I said, man, I have a full-time job, so I, I don't it takes a lot for me to want to leave my house i'll be honest in my old age but i'm going to start trying to do more and more and you know obviously whenever whenever i'm at a signing and again guys my phone uh, that my phone is uh, the little crack thing at the bottom top uh blurs my camera so i'm sorry but whenever the best way is to just meet me at an autograph signing or a show um and a little heads up if you meet me at a show i'll sign it for free D pounds. D pounds. What's up, D pounds? I'm 38 and still want to get into the business with W is WWE. Listen, there's it's never too late. Never too late. Rico started in his 40s. Batista started, I believe, in his what was he? 30s. I think in his sure. 30s. DDP. DDP. My God, DDP. Yeah, it's never too late. And if you, yeah, man, if you believe in yourself enough, and here's the thing, you know, D, everything has a cost to it. You know, everything has a price. If you're willing to pay that cost, willing to pay that price, then I believe anything's possible. And what do I mean by that? Wrestling for me had a cost. I said it in a video and I mean it. I wake up every morning and I limp for, for 20 minutes every day, hands down. That, never a day I don't. And I'm hunched over. That was the price I had to pay to, to, to do that business. Was it worth it? bet it was i'd do it all over again if you're willing to pay that price if you're willing to do what it takes and not make excuses you know on days when you don't want to work out still going on days when you maybe don't want to bump still bumping then man anything's possible brother and i wish you the best retro mint man uh hold up did any of your former students watch you live perform i heard you yeah all right uh did they watch me live i don't know um occasionally I've ran into, I actually, when I was down in, in Tampa, I ran into one of my former students. And remember, these were sixth graders, so they were like 11. And this was, person was in their like 30s at that point. And it, and it was just one of those, occasionally you get reminded of how old you are. And that was definitely one of those moments. But I hope they did. I hope they're all doing great. I loved, loved, loved teaching. Um, if teachers, yeah, listen, and to all the teachers out there, you have my support. If teachers made more money. I would have never left. Teachers should be paid like professional athletes. Cops should be paid like professional athletes. Fire department workers should be paid like professional athletes because those are the people that really make a difference in this world. I'll be honest with you, I left the profession because my first year teaching, I made $29,000. What are you gonna do with that? How am I ever gonna buy a house with that? I mean, if I would have stayed, I probably could have eventually, but you know, and I, I had to seek something else. So great question. Right. Cool. If WWE were to do an All-Stars version of Tough Enough and you were winners in both male and come back in it and determine truly toughest, tough enough of the line. Would I do it? Yes. Um, again, of the Tough Enough you know, graduates, to me, I mean, John Morrison just stands out. Like, he's just on another level. His athleticism, his physique, his look, you know, he was just fantastic. But... You know, there's an argument, Miz, you know, Miz is a superstar. Miz is a, a transitional star. You see Miz on non-wrestling, you know, shows. That's, that says something about him. Um, I, I, would have any, I would do anything that they asked me to do. If they asked me to host the damn thing, I'd do it. Great question. I can't believe that Mick Foley is still walking. Yo, me neither. You and me both. I don't think anyone left any more of themselves in the ring than, than Mick did. Um, I still remember being a fan of watching the Hell in the Cell match in the late 90s with Taker and just, you know, my jaw hitting the floor and thinking, how is this man even, you know, ever going to walk again? And how's he ever? And lo and behold, he did. Mick was just wired differently, though. Mick was just everything he put his body through. He's just he's just a different different human being, and he's one of the nicest guys too. If anyone's ever met Mick, they'll tell you. One of, shockingly, one of the smartest human beings you ever meet as well. All those books he wrote those. It wasn't a ghostwriter. He wrote those with his bare hands. So I hope Mick's doing well. I know how bad I feel. I can't imagine what his body feels like. Batman. Uh. Batman again. I know The Rock is your favorite, but. Uh, 
for the WWE title, who's winning and why. But what does that say? One versus one for the... Ah, one versus... All right, so if it was one-on-one versus... Uh, yeah, man, I would love... Yeah, probably. Either Rock or Austin. Like, you know, Rock's my favorite, but yeah, but you know, there was something about Austin, too, that, I mean, tell me, tell me right now, the moment that glass shattered, that you, that you didn't get goosebumps. I used to actually go at the shows, I used to go underneath where the ramp was. It was underneath gorilla position. And I would stand under there and just to, just to hear the crowd reaction when both of those guys would go out because it's, it's exhilarating. It reminded me on a, a, a weekly basis why I was doing that business. Um, probably never been two guys to, you know, just exhilarate a crowd more than those two. But either one of those. Great question. Devin Garcia. Sup, Maven. Sup. Sup, Devin. What, uh, what theme song would be your choice? Ah, great question. I know I get a lot of I get so much heat for not liking my theme music. Okay. Let's put that to, ah, uh, really? Really? With the horn? <laughs> really? I know I get a lot of heat for the, for the, uh, for the, for not liking my, uh, my theme music. Let's put that to rest. Here's the deal. In my head, I thought about being a wrestler probably when I was eight years old. And through the transition of growing up, I consistently would imagine myself going out to wrestle a match. And in my head, I had my theme music and what that sounded like. And that song was great. That song's a great workout song. But that song just wasn't, wasn't what I had in my head. That's the only reason I say I don't like it. It was a great song. That band is a great band. Um, and trust me, I, Cardona still to this day, he will screenshot that song and send it to me and say, listening to this working out. <laughs> and yeah, if I had my own music to come out to, uh, TI, what you know about that? That's shoot. I still, I still bang that in my truck to this day. C King. C King. What did they pay you for the video game appearance? I think, uh, you were in SmackDown four. Uh, I don't remember what that was, but I, it was about the first time that you do a video game, they actually scan you and then they pay you for your rights. That was why that day in LA, Devon pulled me aside. It was my first time um, doing a video game. And he said, I gotta get my electrolytes in guys. Devon told me, he said, listen, at any, at some point during this day, someone from Jack Pacific is gonna grab you and they're gonna wanna scan you. I don't care what you're doing, unless Vince is talking to you at that moment, you go with them. So I was like, okay, and sure enough, they did. That was about a hour and a half, two hour process. And later on for that, for my rights, I wanna say my first check was for that, was like for 30 grand. Shoot, I wish they would scan me today for stuff if that's how they're still paying. Um, and then it was just also so cool seeing my action figure and seeing myself in a video game. I bought the first video game and I, I, I remember going to Target for my action figure. <laughs> I went to the register and you know, I was like, yeah, she's gonna, she's gonna recognize it's me. And I mean, nah, she could care less, she didn't. And then I even pointed it out. I was like, look, 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 that, that's me. And she was like, oh, okay, great. And I was like, well, all right, yeah. Be humble, maybe, be humble. And then? Any bump or move you hated taking working? Oh, absolutely. Shockingly, this is gonna shock you. I hated being splashed. And I got a concussion once from being splashed from uh, from Val. It, the splash is just something that when you're laying there, you have such little control over. Uh, I mean, yeah, you can cup your arms like this, you can get ready, you can take in breaths, but some guys, when they splash, when they land on you, I mean, it takes every bit of air out of you. And then other times, um, I mean, you know, it's, it's wrestling, so accidents are going to happen. Sometimes you might get hit with an elbow on the way down, you might get hit with a knee. Um, I actually had a finger broken in one of them and a bone popped out of it. And I had to have surgery on my finger the next, uh, the next day uh, just to put the bone back. And that was shocking, man. I'm sure you probably never heard that, that people don't like taking splashes, but I hated it. I'd rather gotten hit in the head with a chair than take a splash. Great question, though. Uh, good day, mate. Did you enjoy being on Raw compared to SmackDown? I'm assuming you're Australian, so I, I did my uh, poor impression. I'm <laughs> um, gonna hold off on answering that question because Zach and I, 
just filmed that video comparing Raw and SmackDown. I talked all about the differences. I talked about, you know, what the what the road was like, who was the locker room leader, um, what was the schedule like, and obviously, what was the money like. But guess what? You're gonna have to wait to see that. I'm not giving away the goods right now because then you won't watch the video. Great, great question though, Mike. How is it working with GCW? Oh my gosh, GCW is yeah, they're they're fantastic. And if you don't know, GCW's game changer wrestling. Um, Cardona hooked me up with that opportunity. Um, I've worked with them twice. I did the uh, the the battle royal a few years back during the Mania weekend in Dallas, and then I was ordained and as an ordained minister, I did Chelsea's and Matt's wedding. Um, at a GCW event in Atlantic City. And yeah, for a shoot, I'm legitimately ordained. That is 100% true. <laughs> how you kept motivated during, how you keep mo kept motivated during failure. Listen, there's a quote by Winston Churchill and it's, if you're going through hell, keep going. That's how. Remember that and utilize it. Use it in daily life. If you're going through hell, keep going going. I always just try to realize that no matter how up I get, it's going to get worse at some point. And no matter how low I get, it's going to get better at some point. And just try to stay in that just happy middle ground. Bro, listen, man, we all have bad days. I mean, all of us. And then we all have good days. So never get too up, never get too down. And remember, if you're going through hell, keep going. Great question. How heavy was the hardcore championship belt? <laughs> that, all belts are a little bit, little bit heavy, and um, it was, a, you know, probably I would say about eight pounds. Um, more than anything, it was just a, a pain in the butt to get in my gear bag because you know you when you're packing your gear bag, that's something that you never check. I learned that the hard way. Um, but you always, you know, you always have everything. I would lay everything out so meticulously. And, you know, putting a, a big folding eight pound belt in that bag, it just, it was, you know, it wasn't something that I was, I was ready to do. But trust me, I made, I made room. But they gave me 10 belts out of, took an extra bag. You ever work with Jeff Hardy? Opinions, love Jeff. Yes, I have. I worked Jeff on, when I was earlier talking about those TNA house shows I did with uh, UWF and Hermie Sadler, um, I had the good fortune of working Jeff. My opinions on Jeff, like I said, like like CM Punk, like RVD, Jeff's an individual. Jeff is his own person, and you, you know, you gotta love him for that. Yeah, you know, I can't imagine what it's like walking around as Jeff Hardy. Um, if I get out of this car right here, on the streets of New York right now, I could walk for 50 blocks, and maybe, maybe one person know who I am. Jeff does the same thing, man. He's gonna be mobbed. There's going to be people that want a piece of Jeff. And I can't imagine what it's like just living living his life. Um, so, man, I give I give Jeff a lot of latitude in the way he, he lives and what it takes, you know, um, what it takes for him to just, you know, to just function in life. I hope he's happy. Because Jeff is the nicest, Jeff is the truly nicest guy on the planet. He really is. Um, and Jeff is one of the most kind-hearted human beings you could ever hope to meet, too. Great question. Hey, Maven, love your content, man. Thank you. Any funny stories from me on the road with Randy Orton? Yeah, I do have one. Thank you for the kind words. Um, here's a good Randy Orton story. And 100% true. 100%. So we were leaving a show in uh, South Dakota one night. And we were trying to find something to do. And at the time, Randy was too young to... to get a rental car so I would get all the rental cars and you know Randy just being Randy at the time needed to just blow off some steam we couldn't get into anything that night so Randy says hey Maeve let me drive so I'm like man you sure he's like yeah so we you know leave and we're in I mean it's just a rural area and we're driving through a, a construction zone and Randy looks over at me smiles and veers the car off and just starts hitting like cones and barricades and everything. He knocked the knocked the um, the license plate off, dented the quarter panel, and like I was like, ah man, I mean, what, are you, what are you gonna do? So the next morning we take the car back and we fill it up with gas and we drop it off at one of those um, 
at one of those kiosks. Again, guys, I'm sorry for the for the beeps. We're in New York City. Nothing I can do about it. We drop it off at one of those kiosks where they don't actually take the car. And then we take a shuttle to, and we have to hand the keys over. So I'm going in there and I go to hand the keys and I'm like, here you go. She's like, is it is, is the gas tank full? I'm like, it's as full as we could get it, sweetie. And I didn't think anything of it until a few months later when I get a very sternly worded letter from both American Express and from Hertz Rental Car claiming that they were gonna sue me through the roof if I didn't pay the, it was like four four thousand five thousand dollars in damages. And I called Randy immediately. And I was like, yo, dude, I was like, man, you remember, remember that rental car in, in South Dakota? And he stopped me and he went, how much? And I was like, man, it's like you know, four grand. He's like, I have it for you. I wanna see you on Friday. I got there and he handed me a cashier's check for it. But listen, man, that might've been just what he needed to blow steam off. And again, I'm not gonna judge any man on what they do. Cause you know what? He made it right. <laughs> Randy was great. I'm happy for <coughs> his success. God bless you, Zach. Thank you. <laughs> Everybody say God bless you, Zach. Thanks. Thanks, chat. Any flings with any divas? Oh my goodness. If you do, come on now, you gotta know my channel. But yeah, I'm not gonna out anybody. Um, I will say, uh, I, I will I will plead the fifth on that. I'm not gonna out anybody. <laughs> do you remember why you wrestled Triple H on Heat once? Yeah. It was randomly expecting World Heavyweight title. Thanks in advance. Ah, who was uh, Instagram? A uh, wrestling historian. A wrestling historian. Yes, I do remember that. Um, it was the uh, first time I ever wrestled Hunter. Um, and in a, I mean, I'd wrestled him in tag matches plenty, but it was the first time I'd ever went with him one-on-one. -on -one. And I still, to this day, I don't know why they put it on Stevie Night Heat. That's what we called it backstage, Stevie Night Heat. Again, check out Stevie's YouTube channel, guys. Um, but I'm glad they did because that was the night that I, I, I think we had like 12 minutes. And, you know, there were some guys that were so good that they would keep me from blowing up. Well, Hunter was one of those guys. Hunter was amazing. And, oh, shoot. What time is it? 2.54. How long are we out? Uh, all right. Um, Hunter was one of those guys. And, um, yeah, I enjoyed enjoyed my time. Batman's back. Batman, you scored a pinball victory over The Undertaker. I did. How hard of a uh, bump and choke slam for Mark. It's the bump I always wanted to take as a non-wrestler. No, you don't. I promise you, you don't want to take a choke slam. Mark takes care of you though. Mark, uh, Taker was, uh, I mean, he was a pro. He didn't, he never, never hurt me. I actually really never got hurt on, on any of the choke slams I uh, I took. They, you know, guys were were good at, at, at performing that. And I did have a pinfall victory against against him with uh, with the help from The Rock. And if you, if you go back and you watch that, and it's on YouTube, um, Taker puts me in a like a, a you know a chin lock where I'm actually looking up at the ramp, and you can see me eyeballing and actually looking for the rock to come, and because I knew I mean I knew he was he was about to about to come and yeah it was like I was inside marking out so hard when I saw him running down, and uh, yeah listen you know, Rock had to agree to that spot for me. Taker had to agree to, you know, to let me pin him. And yeah, again, just both guys, what can you say? What can you say? Thank you guys. Thank you so much. What was Crash Holly like to work with? Oh my gosh, God rest Crash too. Another one, another one we lost way too soon. Crash was a true pro. Crash was a guy who was just always smiling backstage. A great, great wrestler um i i still remember his 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 walk and how he walked like he uh like he had just took down a complete brothel all by himself and uh yeah crash we crash left us way 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 too soon i think i got time for like one more guys um hold up love this channel thank you you should bring other ruthless aggression guys on your channel hey our hopes with this channel, we want to establish ourselves. I don't want to count my chickens before they, they hatch, obviously. Um, I don't know. We might put a video out. Next video might do 20 views. Who knows? Um, but if the channel continues to grow, um, I hope it does. Do you hope it does? I hope so. Yeah, he <laughs> hopes it does. If it continues to grow, uh, what our hopes are, because eventually 
we'd like to we, what what our goal was with this channel is just to show wrestlers from a different viewpoint a different side and you know the great thing about this uh this format about this venue youtube is it's not just for one person to have success i want everybody to have success and if somebody's watching my channel then hopefully they'll go and watch someone else's channel and if someone likes my content well guess what there's going to be another wrestler out there who has stories that aren't mine and i want them to be able to uh to share those so eventually if this channel continues to be successful that is our uh our goal and what we what we hope to accomplish uh guys um I've never done one of these lives. I don't know if it was good. I don't know if it was bad. I, you you might have hated it if you did. Sorry, if you loved it, let me know. Um, thank you. I listen, guys. I I can't thank you enough for the tips. Like literally, I, that mind blown. Um, I did not expect to go on here and and earn a dollar. So, I thank you so much. Um, hey. We're always taking feedback on how to make the channel better. Video ideas. A couple of the videos we, we recently shot, Erica, because they came from from your your ideas. And uh, thank you, uh, Bruce. Bruce Collins, shout out. Thank you so much for the, uh, for the tip and thank you for the kind words. Um, we're always up for suggestions. We're always up for, for ideas. Eventually, Zach and myself will run out of ideas. It's going to be a while, though. Um, but let, let us know what you thought. If you want me to do more live content, that's definitely something that we're, we're toying around with. I just don't want to hold up coin TV. Ah, great. Thank coin TV. Thank you so much. Gosh, I'll give you a shout out all day long. Um, if you want us to do more of this live contact, I content, I've told Zach, I, I hate the fact that I can't answer every question. I hate it. I hate the fact that that when we do a video, I'll read through the comments, Zachary read through the comments, and we'll be like, man, that's yeah, you know, that's a great question. And you know, like for instance, you know, I see the question all the time. What do you what do guys call themselves backstage? Their gimmick name, their shoot name, or their real name? Real quick, Andrew Test Martin, one of my best friends. I miss him every day. Um, I called him Test until he I won him over, and I knew I won him over when he told me to call him Andrew. And then I never called him Test again. I called him Andrew. And one, you know, we'd hang out. And great, another great question. But then again, I've never been backstage and, and heard anybody uh, anybody call Taker Mark. <laughs> so great question. Keep them coming. If you want me to do more live um, live content, let me know. I'm never going to be the channel that 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 tells you to subscribe, like, or do anything like that because I don't want to ask anything of you. Um, but just do me one favor. I'll, I will say this. If, if you enjoy this, you know, tell a friend. Tell somebody else about it. And you know, just keep the ideas coming our way. Um, yeah. You guys have shocked me. I thought I was relegated to the dustbin of wrestling history. And, uh, and my man over here and you guys told me otherwise. <laughs> Thank you. I love you all. And uh, let us know what you thought of this little live. Let us know also if you think we should post this. I think we should. Zach says we shouldn't. <laughs> let us know if you'd like to post us to post this on the channel. Um, I'll try to see if I can talk him into it. Thank you, guys. Have a great day. And remember, if you can leave you with one thing, I will leave you with this. If you're going through hell, keep going. Get, get, me, off. get me off that. <laughs>